Welcome. This time I'm going to be talking with you about how to make a simple hand puppet. Many children in a classroom or workshop setting will find it very difficult to make and control a regular standard marionette with all of the strings that sometimes get tangled and become very discouraging. And what I'm going to do today is to ask that you consider making a simple hand puppet which can be very effective. This one here you probably recognize as Little Red Riding Hood. She has two simple little hands made uh, like mittens and her head, a cape, and a little gown or a kind of a t-shirt shape here with one little button for adornment. Now I'm going to show you step by step the processes I went through to making this little hand puppet. Thank you. I'm going to set her down now. Probably the first thing I did was to make a uh, small t-shirt a little gown which has an opening in the top with a drawstring in it. And when I come to t put the neck of the hand puppet down inside that hole, I'll be pulling this drawstring to tighten the neck around the hand puppet's head. I've also left openings at each of the sleeves here so that when I put my hand inside the gown, as we always do with a hand puppet, one of my fingers will stick out at one end, my long middle finger comes out to this side, my thumb is in this side right here, and my pointy finger, my index finger, comes out through the head. And I'll just put an unfinished head on my finger there to show you. So this is basically the, the these are basically the two main parts that we'll need to complete the, the hand puppet. Of course, we'll want to make some hands and stick them on as well. And here I've made a, a little cardboard mitten, which I'll just stick on the end of my thumb temporarily until we get further on into the program to show you the, how I make them. Here we are. Now, we can animate that. He can clap his hands, he can grab his nose in this case, and maybe turn his head and bow and be shy. So there's a lot of gestures you can make with a very simple kind of hand puppet. Now I'm going to put down the, uh, the little t-shirt and talk with you about how to make a, a puppet head. I have here some material which is pretty easy to come by. It's styrofoam. This block I've cut from a very large block with a jackknife and I'll just cut a small piece of this away from my microphone. It's quite crunchy. I'm doing this so that you'll recognize the kind of styrofoam or plastic I'm recommending you use. If it doesn't have that crunchy, crusty snow sound, like you're walking through ice, it's probably not the kind you should be using. And I'm suggesting you this, you, that you use this very light, very crunchy kind of styrofoam. <clears throat> Here, I've uh, begun a, a simple character, which will probably be a puppy dog. I've just cut out some blocky looking pieces of styrofoam and this piece I've glued to the other one. His right ear is glued to, the, to his head and his left ear is as well. Notice that uh, when you're working with styrofoam it's very easy to stick a piece of styrofoam onto the head and I haven't shaped this. Let's pretend now that this is going to be a kind of a simple nose. I put a toothpick into the styrofoam first and then what I'll do is dip a, a small piece of styrofoam for the nose in glue. And here I put some yellow aliphatic resin glue on the end of the styrofoam. And I can just stick that right onto the toothpick and squash it in place like that. And it fits very nicely and that'll make a good solid joint. I'd let it dry probably for three or four hours before I used it. Now I have some heads here on the rack to my left, which I will show you one at a time, which will indicate the various stages of building of a, of a hand puppet head. These two are interesting because they use different kinds of necks. This, the little dog here, has a neck which is built up out of a rolled tube of brown craft paper, such as you'd find in a paper bag. My suggestion is that you take a roll, a strip of a paper bag, perhaps about three inches wide, and lay it out on a table, moisten it with water and then paint some uh, glue on it, Elmer's glue or any of the white glues would be okay, and then roll it up, 
so that it just fits the finger of the child or the adult who's going to be making this puppet. In this case, my fingers are about three quarters of an inch in diameter. So I roll this, this uh, tube just big enough to fit my finger. Perhaps you'd want to use a dowel stick inside and, and then slip the paper off the dowel stick afterwards. Another way to make a neck is by taking a piece of wood and drilling a hole down through it. Now this is a piece of two by four, just ordinary constru construction grade lumber. And I've drilled a three quarter inch diameter hole down through the piece of wood, all the way through to the other side. If I want a very long neck, I'll leave it, perhaps two, or two inches long. The next thing I did was to take the, this kind of a piece to my bandsaw and cut in a cylinder shape around that hole after I drilled the hole and, and uh, end up with the finished cylinder. Normally, I like to cut a groove around the cylinder at the bottom of it. And you can see it in this head right here, where I've cut a groove around the bottom of that neck so that when the costume is put on near the end of the construction period, it will, the drawstring will tighten around that little lip. And I will have painted some glue in there, by the way, as well. The costume will tighten onto that, dry, and be, uh, it'll harden in place. I'm going to set this one down and show you another head, which is in progress. This is one which I've begun to cover with paper mache. I've just done about half of the head. On, on the left cheek here, I've used small bits of paper bag, such as this, little postage stamp side bits, bits of paper bag. Put them in water and then lay them onto a part of the face that I've already painted with glue. And I'm going to have to paint a little glue onto this part of the face to make it moist. Now this head has been drying for about half an hour since I put the paper mache on. I'm just going to I dip my, my brush alternately in water and in glue to get a good surface so that the paper will be received well. Now here Here's my paper. I've, I've just dipped it slightly in water and shaken it off. And I'm going to press it down with my finger. Or if I don't want to get glue on my hands, I'll just use the brush to press it down into the crevices and into the shapes. I think I ought to put another piece on there to show you how I overlap the pieces. There we go. And if the, if the corners of the paper tend to stick up and bounce around, I think it's well to take some heavy glue and go around the edges of each piece as you, as you put it in place until it really does stick down well. Now that's illustrating it pretty well, I think. This should dry, as I say, for two, three, four hours. Possibly you want to put it over a, uh, a register in the floor where there's some, some heat coming through. You might want to put a fan on it. Here, I've really dumped it into the paint. I really meant to paint it a little later. Well, we'll capitalize on that some way before the, the afternoon is over. I'm just going to paint that out rather than try to remove it. You could actually paint directly on the styrofoam if you wanted to. I've done that. And as you can see right here on his upper lip, there's a texture which is a little rougher than it is over here on his cheek. I don't know if you can see that very carefully. Right here, it's quite smooth. And right there, there's kind of a uh, bumpy looking surface. You make a choice when you paint your, when you make your hand puppet head. If you'd like to have a rough texture, it takes light very well that way. I suppose I could give him a blue eye since that's the color of convenience here. There we go. Maybe this is a mummy that came from an Egyptian tomb somewhere. We can fantasize about that possibility. Okay. I'm going to set him aside before I get into any more trouble. Once I've, I've uh, got the head completely covered with brown craft paper, the way I've done this, the next step is to paint it in, in gesso. If you, if you uh, are using the kind of paints I use, which are acrylic paints, gesso is a, is a white paint or a filler, which just kind of fills up the cracks and gives it an even texture all the way around. 
I'm just going to indicate this. I don't really plan to paint this whole head. But that will dry and give you a head which looks like this. Now this one is a kind of a fantasy head. I suppose it might be a Pinocchio character, something of the kind. But before we go a lot further, I'd like to show you a, a, another step in the construction, which has to do with the making of puppet hands, the hand puppet hands. Now I've drawn out here a pattern for two hands, a right hand and a left hand side by side. But really what I'm going to do is to cut them out and fold them. Once I've, once I've cut them out, I'll fold it so that we're making one hand out of this. My next step will be to take some uh, paper tape and close the open side like this. Just put the, put the paper tape along the edge and seal it over so that the mitten now is, is held uh, closed around its edge. Now this can be painted with the acrylic paint and it'll conceal where the tape begins and ends quite well. I've already made one of these hands to that pattern and that size. And rather than finish this one, I'll simply show you the other one. Here it is, now I've got the other side of the cardboard showing. This will be the right hand for the hand puppet. And I'd probably wear it like this. Here would be the head. Here's the right hand. And when I finish making this hand, this will be the left hand. And you can imagine the shirt, perhaps, covering my hand. Next, I'll treat the hand just as I did the head and put a coat of gesso on it. And then a coat of, of uh, base color paint, whatever color is appropriate to the character I'm making. And I'm going to reach over and show you some of the other hand puppets I have uh, lined up on the table here to uh, give you a chance to see which puppet those hands go to. Now, here's a little character with a shirt already on. I've already glued it on. And you can still see the ends of the drawstrings that uh, hold the neck and the costume together. This is just now drying. I, I put the uh, glue in here perhaps a half an hour ago, maybe as long as an hour ago, and it should be pretty stable right now. Let me put my hand inside this little character. While he's on my hand, I'd like to say that there are, there are a number of different kinds of paper you might choose to use in making the, making the character. One of the easiest to use, I find, is, is the ordinary paper that you'd find in a paper towel. It's very soft and it will conform to the rounded shape, for instance, of the nose or an eyebrow, or it might fit into the mouth very nicely. And you can cover the styrofoam much more easily with a soft paper, such as paper towel. Maybe even toilet tissue would be a good substitute. You'd need more layers because it is softer in order to make it tough. Okay. Now these hands, I think, should go on the outside of the cloth uh, glove so that if we're making this over again, I would use a larger glove like this, a larger hand like this, and just slip it over my glove, put glue on the end, end of the cloth shirt, and then let this sit for a while so it was nice and dry. He's a little bit deformed here with hands of different sizes. Here we go. There he is. And you want to give him a voice right away, I suppose. I'm tempted to. Here is a head which has been given a base coat. Now, it, it has, uh, I've already given it a local color, a general color. I've mixed some, some red in the cheek and in the mouth 
and a little red at the ends of the ears. And I thought it might be interesting to uh, show you how loose, how loosely I like to paint. I'm going to. I have a palette of color mixed up here, and I'd like to show that to you. Now you can see that I've arranged my colors. If I've made that available enough, here's. I've got some yellow, blue, red. This is yellow ochre. That's a burnt umber. This is black and white. Now I can mix those all together in my palette. And again, I want to remind you, I recommend acrylic paints as being the probably the very best. They're a little bit expensive, but they last very well, and they are a good variety of colors. The burnt umber and the yellow ochre I use as, as a, a choice to mix with um, white, in this case. I'm not sure what I, well, I'll just give them a little bit of uh, highlight here and there with this. I have to think with my eyes and stop moving my mouth so much. All right, now I'm going to put a little highlight over his eyebrows, kind of let the top of his head shine a little bit, and a little spot here and there just to give you a little, don't be alarmed, this will all turn out fine in the end. Kind of looks messy. Now, I've rinsed my brush out a little bit, and I'm just going to blend those colors into the colors I've already painted. This is very much like putting makeup on an actor. Really, it is, because this character will do a little acting for us, I suppose, eventually, in one of our programs. I also paint with my fingers when I have to, and I'm going to rub on his cheek and around the edges of some of this area that I've painted to make it come out a little bit more smoothly. I feel I have more control painting with my fingers than I do with the brush sometimes. I can move the stuff around and kind of blend it in. There we go. Maybe a little eyeball. And I suggest that uh, when, you're, when you're working with a, a puppet, that you remember that the audience is going to be quite a distance away from the puppet. Now, I've given you the, the inside and the outside corner of the, of, the, uh, of the eye. Now I'm going to give you, this, this fellow's going to be blue-eyed, I think. I'll use some of that nice juicy blue paint there for, for the iris. That kind of brings him to life a little bit. Now I'm going to go back and add a little black paint at the very center where the pupil is, you know, where the iris opens up, and you can see into the interior part of the eye. Because this paint is all wet, it mixes as I paint. So the, the, the effect is not always very clear. But I like what I call a wet technique. I think it takes a little courage, courage, maybe more courage than you'd want to try on the first time out. Now, this is what I call a strike. It's a little um, touch of white paint drawn from the pupil out toward one side. And you can see that that might look as if his eyes are shining. That's the purpose of that little, little uh, gesture, that strike. Maybe I'm going to give him some teeth now since I have a white paintbrush in my hand. I'll just go ahead and put, put a little white inside his mouth as if his teeth are showing a little bit. There. Now, I think I'll give him a five o'clock shadow. This fellow will be uh, unshaven. I'm just going to work my brush into the black and into the dark brown and kind of touch it here and there as if you're maybe a tough guy that hadn't had a shave for a while. Now, these are awfully big pieces of stubble for a beard, but remember, your audience isn't going to be sitting right on top of the puppets. They're going to be off at a little distance, maybe 20 or 30 feet or the other side of a classroom. There he goes. Now, I can give, a, give the inside of his ear a little shape by painting a shadow line in there, maybe. 
What do you think of that? And then a hole for his ear so he can hear. Now you can make up designs for your characters that'll be fun for you to paint. Like he ought to have some holes for his nose so he can breathe, shouldn't he? I've just painted those in. And he looks like a kind of a tough fellow. This head was made by one of my students in a puppetry class at a middle school. I imagine the student was probably about, well, what is sixth grade? Probably about 12, maybe 13 years old, maybe 10 years old. And I've just painted up what, the, what my student gave to me as a, as a present. I'd like to show you another hand puppet. This is one that was painted some little time ago. But this is another head that was painted by one of my students. And I've just taken the, the liberty of finishing, up, finishing it up uh, with my own painting scheme. There he is. It's one I enjoy a lot. The expressions are quite different if you compare these two heads. And I, I rather like the rough texture the, that is the, uh, the, the texture of the, of the paper mache on these heads. I don't try to hide it. I think it adds a lot of character. This is one I'm going to finish up with. I'd like, you to, I'd like to show you Grandpa before I finish up on uh, starting another paint job here. And Grandpa is uh, no different from any of the rest of the puppets I've showed you, except that his head is a bit smaller. And I've added some fake fur, some fleece or fake sheepskin to his mustache and his eyebrows and the back of his head. There he is. His necktie is, is a piece of leather, and I've taken an old pair of blue jeans and made an apron and a, and a kind of a skirt that looks like trousers for him. And one of my old shirts with a small plaid design for his, for his shirt. And I think he looks like he's probably a good old fella. Yeah, oh, I think so too. This is Grandma over here from Red Riding Hood. And this is another example of very loose painting where I've done her eyes. I've, I've let the paint be very wet when I put it on. I painted it all in one sitting and just put a little dark streak here to, to emphasize the shape of her eyebrow and a little white on each corner of her eye, and then kind of a mixture of brown and black in the middle to give her, her, her eyes an effect. And then some fake fur I glued onto her skull, onto the, onto the top of her head. Well, let me get a start on this strange-looking creature. I think I'll start off by... by... Uh, making some large eyes. And let's see, what, maybe a yellow eye would be fun since I have some bright yellow paint here. I'll start it off with a, a good big spot of yellow on each side. Maybe this is an exotic bird of some kind. The yellow-eyed TV watcher. Huh? Now, What's, I, I have some brown paint on this, I'll use it. I, I want you to get the idea that painting can be an awful lot of fun if you're feeling free about it and don't, be, don't get uptight. Just enjoy yourself as you go about it. Now this will be seen from a great distance. The audience should be able to tell that that's a yellow-eyed TV watcher from a long way away. Enjoy the wet texture of the, of the paint. It really is a lot of fun. Now, I'm going to paint his bill, his beak. And this will be yellow ochre with a little black mixed in. Just slightly different color from his eyes. If you're really interested in learning more about puppetry, in any, in any kind of puppetry, it doesn't have to be hand puppets, it might be shadow puppets or marionettes with strings on them, or rod puppets, finger puppets, there are all kinds of puppets. And there are many, many people who probably live quite near you, some of them, who can help you with a puppet project. 
If you'd like to hear some more of, about puppets from puppeteers who are near, living near you, you might want to contact the Puppeteers of America. That is an organization that is all over the United States, the Puppeteers of America. And if you go to your library, I think your librarian should be able to help you by finding a copy of the Puppetry Journal. And it has names and addresses in it, which you can use to make contact with somebody who's as interested in puppetry as you are and might have worked in it a long time. Now, this yellow-eyed TV watcher is turning out to have a pink skull. I'll just carry that a little bit toward the back. Now I'm going to change color. I have a blue that I'd like to mix in with that. That'll give you an idea. That's kind of a start. One little dot for each eye at the middle. I'm going to stop painting him right away. I think I've gone about as far as I need to go on this time around. Now, the next time I pick him up to paint, I'll have to think maybe I'll put some feathers sticking out of the top of his head, or might give him a hat or something of the kind to make him an interesting character. I suggest that when you, when you uh, begin making puppets, that you have an idea ahead of time what the character is going to be like, what does it have to do. And once you've decided that, then design. That's what designing a puppet is all about, is making it look the way it is meant to look to tell the story you're going to tell. Now, Grandpa would probably like to say something to all of you. So we'll put him in character, shall we? That's right, Mr. Rose. All right. Well, Grandpa, what would you like to say to the boys and girls and the teachers and all of the other people who are looking in on this program? Well, well, I'd say keep it up, everybody. And uh, if you've started a puppet project and need some help, ask your teacher or go to the library. Well, that sounds like a good idea, too. You see my lips moving, do you? Yes, I do, Mr. Rose. I don't understand that at all. Well, I'm not a ventriloquist. I'm a puppeteer. And you are a puppeteer, too. Remember that. I hope you'll enjoy your puppet projects and keep in touch with puppeteers. Bye. <laughs>